Hello everyone, I'm Sebastian Y and this is Foundations of Economics. In this video I'm going to introduce the field of game theory and talk about the most famous game of them all, The Prisoner's Dilemma. Game theory is the study of how people behave in strategic situations. A strategic situation is one in which people must consider how others will respond to their own choice of action. We did not need game theory when we talked about monopoly and perfect competition. In perfect competition, individual firms are so small that they don't have a substantial effect on one another. Monopolists are the only firm in the market, and so there's nothing to worry about there. However, if a firm in an oligopoly changes their price or changes their output, it will have a noticeable impact on the other firms in the market. That is what sets oligopoly apart from those simpler market structures. Game theory has its roots in mathematical models going back to the 19th century, but it was first codified into a distinct field by the Hungarian mathematician John von Neumann and German economist Oskar Morgenstern in their 1944 book, Theory of Games and Economic Behavior. This started a revolution in industrial organization where economists started thinking about oligopolies using game theory instead of the ways that they'd done before. In game theory, a game is a model of a strategic situation. A game has three main components and it needs to have all of them to fit into our definition of a game. These three things are the players, strategies, and payoffs. The players are the agents in the game who make decisions. We need to have at least two players to be considered a game. In oligopolies, the players are the firms in the market. When we go on to build our first basic oligopoly models, we're going to have two different firms. A strategy is a plan of action that a player could choose. In an oligopoly, we might think of these as the prices that the firms charge, the quantities they produce, or perhaps the amount of advertising that each firm does. The payoffs that a player gets from a game depend on the strategies that end up being chosen within that game. In an oligopoly, we usually think about the payoffs as the profits that each firm gets. But if we think about a simple game that you might play with your friend, then the payoffs could just be the satisfaction of winning the game. The Prisoner's Dilemma is arguably the most famous game in all of game theory. You may have even seen some version of it before because it appears quite frequently in popular culture. The story of The Prisoner's Dilemma is that we have two criminals who are caught and put in separate prison cells. Each is separately offered to make a choice, either incriminate their accomplice, which we call Fink, or refuse to talk, which we will call Silent. These two prisoners committed some crime together, but if they both stay silent, there is not enough evidence to convict them, and they receive only a short sentence of one year for some minor crime that they were caught doing. If only one of the prisoners thinks, he is released and the other serves a long sentence of 20 years. Finally, if both prisoners think, then they are both held for a medium length sentence of 8 years. We use a normal form game matrix to represent the player's strategies and payoffs of a game. Let's draw that up for our prisoner's dilemma. The normal form game matrix will take the form of a grid. We have two players here. We have player one and we have player two. Each player has two options to choose from. That's going to give us a two by two grid. Player 1 could think or stay silent. Player 2 could also think or stay silent. I will always put player 1 on the rows and player 2 on the columns, but that decision is arbitrary. So far we've designated the players and the strategies. Now we need to do the payoffs. The payoffs for each of the four combinations of actions will go in the boxes. If both players stayed silent, then they will each get one year in prison. To make sure we keep things straight, I'm always going to write player 1's payoff in the bottom left of the box and player 2's payoff in the upper right of the box. Sometimes you'll see them written side by side, but I prefer to do it this way to just make sure that we keep it clear. If both players think, then they both get 8 years. Now, if player 1 is silent but player 2 thinks, we're on the bottom left box. Player 1 stayed silent and so they get the 20 year sentence. And player 2 gets to go free. On the other hand, if player 1 thinks and player 2 stays silent, player 1 gets to go free, while player 2, who stayed silent, gets 20 years in prison. 
This is how we make our normal form game matrix. So what course of action are these players going to take? Let's look at player one first. Player one knows that player two could either think or stay silent. Let's suppose that player one thinks player two will think. If player one also thinks, he will get eight years in prison, and if he stays silent, he will get 20 years in prison. He, of course, prefers to get only eight years in prison, and so player one is going to choose to think in that case. Now, if player two stays silent, player one is now choosing between go free and one year. Player one, of course, prefers to go free, and so, again, think is the better option. So no matter what player two does, player one is always going to be better off if they think. Let's go over to player two now. They are facing the same decision. If player two thinks player one is going to think, then they're going to choose between also think to get eight years or stay silent and get 20 years. Just like player one, player two is going to be better off if they think. If player two thinks that player one will be silent, they also prefer to go free instead of getting one year, and so they're going to choose to think. What we can see here is that no matter what happens, each player is individually better off by choosing think. In game theory, if one strategy is always better than the other, we say that it is the dominant strategy. So both prisoners are going to think, and they're both going to get eight years in prison. The outcome that we found here, think and think, is what we call the Nash Equilibrium. We define a Nash Equilibrium as a set of actions where neither player can improve their payoff by switching. The Nash Equilibrium was named after the mathematician John F. Nash, who you may have heard of from the movie or the book A Beautiful Mind. The Nash Equilibrium is not necessarily the best outcome for everyone. It is simply one where neither player can improve their payoff by switching to a different strategy. Let's go back to the normal form game matrix to see why this is the case. If Fink Fink is the Nash Equilibrium, then neither player should be able to improve by switching to silent. If player 2 were to switch to silent, they would go from 8 years to 20 years, so they don't want to do that. If player 1 were to switch from Fink to silent, they would also go from 8 years to 20 years, they don't want that. And so Fink Fink is going to be a Nash Equilibrium. Holding the other player's action constant, we can't improve our outcome by switching. Looking at the matrix, we can see that there is an outcome here where both players do better than the Nash Equilibrium, and that's silent and silent. If both players were to have stayed silent, they would have each gotten one year in prison instead of the eight years that they each get in the Nash Equilibrium. However, this requires both players to switch to silent. This outcome, though, is not a Nash Equilibrium. We can see why by seeing what happens if each player switches their strategy. Suppose both players were to pick silent. If player one switched from silent to think, he would go from one year to go free and he prefers that. Similarly, for player two, he could go from one year to go free, and so both players would be better off by switching their strategy. Both do that, and we end up back in our Fink-Fink-Nash equilibrium. This tension between cooperation and self-interest is a key component of the prisoner's dilemma, and as we'll see in the next video, oligopoly models.